So thank you so much for being here. Obviously, normally we would have, under regular circumstances, we would have welcomed you into Force Space, which is located uh, in the downtown campus of Concordia University on the corner of Mikhail and the Mizanov in the library building. So we're very excited to offer a diff different platform, in this case, working with the great folks from Sucker, who will introduce themselves shortly, I'm sure, um, to bring you these live kind of making sessions over the next uh, month, really. So we're starting in January and then moving through the month of February with a bunch more. So I will put the link in the chat afterwards to um, upcoming sessions in case you had so much fun today that you wanna come back for some more and you just need to do something a little bit different with your time and your day throughout the week. This is a great option for you. Mm -hmm. um, let me just see if I, uh, I'm forgetting to say something. I'm just pulling up a few notes here. Yeah, what I did want to say is that we are running this event uh, meeting style, obviously, as you've noticed, instead of webinar style, because really the intent is for you to feel as though you are actually participating in this um, moment together, be, be able to connect, to dialogue. You can unmute yourself if you want to speak and ask questions and just share you can obviously use the chat if you want to as well. If you don't feel comfortable with any of that, you can keep your video on and simply follow along and listen to what's happening in the space here today. So we encourage you to play with whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, and as I say, we're here to uh, assist you in any way that we can. Uh, for space, for those of you who don't know us, um, is essentially a public space where we host events and use a variety of formats, video podcasts, games, residencies, to really engage with and activate the initiatives and research and teaching happening across Concordia University. So we're very fortunate and very happy to collaborate with Sucker, as I said, on these care package making sessions uh, to that end. Um, we would also just like to begin by acknowledging that Concordia University and Force Space is located on unceded indigenous lands and the Kanyankahaga Nation is recognized as the custodians of the land and waters on which we gather. And Jojage is historically known as a gathering place for many First Nations. And today it is home to diverse populations of indigenous and other peoples. And we do respect the continued connection with the past, present and future in our ongoing relationships with indigenous and other peoples within the Montreal community. And um, on that note, we are very pleased again to have two very uh, special folks with us here today who will be kind of leading uh, this session. So I'll pass it over right away to our colleague, Anna, over to you. Wonderful, thank you so much. Um, it's really wonderful to have you all here together, um, even though we're all separated by a distance and a screen um, that we can kind of come together and connect over this um, over materials and uh, spend this time and time throughout the next couple of weeks just uh, being together and casually sharing what everybody's working on. And then we're going to have some quiet time, well not quiet, but like non-program time to just make and chat. Um, so I encourage you to pull out your supplies and kind of get going. Um, if you don't feel like you want your face to be on camera, that's um, totally okay. You can move your camera to just face your hands or your materials, kind of like the collage cam over here, or you can turn off your screen if you'd like. Um, uh, the other um, thing we have is uh, we have Lisa Graves with us today. She's a photographer here at Concordia, um, amazing photographer, and is interested in digital um, portraiture. So um, I think uh, maybe she could talk a tiny bit about what she was hoping. Um, do you want me to give you the floor? Or you want me to just give a brief? Yeah. No, I, I can talk if you want. Can, is, can everyone hear me? I just done. Yeah. So uh, basically what I was thinking of doing is to do a series of remote portraits. Wow, there's a kitty cat, nice. <laughs> and um, what it would entail is not today, but if you're interested, uh, I would follow up with you as an individual and I would take your photograph from my home to your home. And it can, do, it can be all kinds of, I just wanna be as creative as possible so it doesn't mean showing your face, it could be your, just your hands or mostly material, it could be your shadow on the material, like anything, but just maybe like a, a little bit of human presence. But um, I just thought it would be nice because you're all um, creative people and you're working with some really nice props. 
And also I find that uh, it would be nice to get some more, um, just more presence from the student body and from the body outside of just higher up, whatever. So just a thought. So I guess maybe um, the best would be, um, how do you want to work it? Like I'll use my email at the university and then. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Or you could also send a private message through um, in the chat. You can okay. send a message to okay. Lisa if um, you're interested yeah. in participating in that. And we'll also bring up your email uh, maybe towards the end or put that in Okay. The chat. Thank you so um, much. Yeah. Feel free to use the chat as well. It's another good resource if you're not, uh, if you don't want to um, talk out loud or, uh, but you really, we're really hoping that people are sharing their thoughts and ideas and, um, and ideas about what people are making. Um, but I'll just dive into a, just like a little bit of introduction about um, the Center for Creative Reuse. Um, Sucker started in 2017. Uh, based on my master's research in art education, actually, um, we were looking at a way to sort of solve this problem of a large amount of materials that were still usable, um, but uh, no, uh, they were headed straight to the landfill. There was no way to access them from the people that were uh, discarded to the people that needed that. So um, we created a proposal and a pitch and created this physical space. Originally, it was in the hall building. Um, and I'm wondering if who's been to Sucker before? Have you, has anybody been there? Yeah, okay, great. So a few people. Um, so that space became um, kind of like a, a material depot, a store, a free store uh, filled with materials that were diverted from the landfill. Um, these were things that came from offices and departments and studios and professors and planning departments as we move um, materials around in like the university. Um, and in the last three years, we've diverted over 20 tons of material. And that, that material is like everything from the things that you got into your pack, in your packages to um, file folders and uh, miscellaneous um, know, like canvases from the fine arts department. We get a wide range of stuff. And actually, I could take you on a little bit of a tour since I were, I'm here in the space right now. Um, since COVID and um, March, about uh, March 13th of last year, we've been closed to the public, which has really been unfortunate. Um, and we, Ariane and I, have been collecting materials from different departments and putting them up on our shelves in anticipation for you all to join us again. Um, but uh, until things are safe to do so, we have to keep our doors closed. Um, should I do a little tiny walkabout? I'm gonna take this collage cam, so don't mind if you're sensitive to movement. Maybe, uh, yeah, just uh, be, be cautious. Okay. So um, we have a little bit of, um, uh, oh, it's gonna be hard for me to talk. Okay, so sewing station. Um, we have sort of a making station that's uh, fabric, uh, sorry, um, paper product. And um, Anna, I'll just interrupt to say that folks, you can control your view. So if you press the speaker view now, if you want to move out of gallery and press speaker, you'll see the collage cam uh, bigger on your screen to, to see what Anna is showing you there. Just a little note. Back to you. So you can get a bit of a sense of what Anna is showing. A lot of the paper product uh, canvases recuperated from the fine arts faculty um, of all different sizes. So uh, those are discarded sort of a few years before we get them. Uh, and if students don't recuperate them, then they come to our center. Uh, she just passed by our, our fairly new uh, sewing station. So we are in our new space. We've been here for about a year, year and a half. Um, and it allows us to um, offer a lot more uh, making sessions uh, in our space. Previously, we had about 600 square feet and it was purely materials. 
And so now we have uh, a big table, a place to do some sewing, uh, in the future, some places to do uh, paper making and things like that. And we're working on, on setting up a, a workshop for, for sort of woodworking as well in the future. So we're, we're looking forward to, to opening our doors again, but also working through this care project, we're able to send materials out and, and connect with all you makers uh, across the country. Yeah, so that was a little bit awkward and, and harder to do than I anticipated, but thanks for walking with me. Um, we just got a bunch of uh, new um, materials that came in from the Loyola campus. So we actually have another side over there, but it is a mess. So we're not gonna show you that one. Um, you'll just have to come in person when our doors are open again. Um, but like Arian was saying, really, um, this this care project, it. It came from this need of wanting to get materials out to all of you um, spread out, um, but having uh, the barrier of this, these closed doors. And um, in, I think it was about September or October, we were approached by Andrew Woodall, the Dean of Students, with this idea, how can we send out packages to Concordians across the country? Um, is that even, feasible, we looked at the budget, we looked at kind of what that plan would look like. And we thought, okay, we can probably do about 300 packages. Well, in the process of packing them and getting all of the requests in that came so fast, we were actually um, sent out over 600. So that's pretty amazing. Um, and all the different kind of categories, we'll get to see people throughout the next um, couple of weeks and hopefully re-engage people spread out um, all across Canada. So that's a little bit about how Sucker came to be and why we um, do this kind of work. And I mean, obviously it's sustainability, it's uh, keeping things out of the landfill and um, it goes towards our zero waste goal here at Concordia. Um, but also we're really missing all of the people. We're missing all of the projects and the humans that usually come into our space and show us what they're working on and are able to kind of um, yeah, fill these walls with the, the human part. So this is really a treat for us. And I really appreciate you all coming and joining us in this session. And um, yeah, look, look forward to hearing more about what you're working on. So yeah, I'd like to do a little bit of introductions around um, if there are uh, uh, like here with you all, um, if you would like to introduce yourself and maybe if you received a package, you could share like something that you were surprised or excited to see or a material you're working on, working with that's a little bit unusual. Maybe that's a, a kind of prompt. Would anyone like to introduce themselves? Christina. Uh, my name is Christina. I work at the School of Graduate Studies. I'm also a master's student in education. Um, this is my first time doing this. And uh, I got excited. I, I really like the maps that are inside uh, the package. I was just like looking at them. I thought they were really fun. And um, I'm not, sh I wasn't sure what to do. But then I thought I got this really pretty um, card over the holiday from uh, one of my favorite sort of fantastical universes. And so I thought um, I could try and cut out the, the front end of it so I could reuse it to do a card for next year for someone else. So I got it. And then in that sense, I saw this really pretty um, material that was in it. I wasn't expecting, I was expecting paper, but this is actually fabric. And I thought the colors would maybe match. Maybe I could match it up with this or something and make it like a Christmas themed card with this on top. And the background, I'm going to reuse the actual package that it was sent in. I'm going to use it to make a card out of it. So I'm trying to reuse as much as possible. So we'll see. It might not turn out that pretty, but we're gonna give it a go. <laughs> Great, Thank wonderful. You. Thank you so much. Yeah. I can go. Hi everyone, Ariana Salisa. 
finishing my PhD in sociology and anthropology. Um, I also helped to start the ethnography lab at Cord Concordia University. I know we originally were hoping to connect more with the Center for Creative Reuse because we've had some reuse projects as well. And I just think it's such an awesome initiative. And I want to thank you all for all of the work, like all the work that even just went into the care packages and keeping the space going over the over the COVID. It's just really wonderful to see that happening. And there's a lot of hidden work I know that goes into that. So thank you. Um, anyways, I'm, I love collage um, and I'm also from a small island that had a free store and it's such a rare thing to kind of have in the world. So it's so super refreshing to see that. Um, and one of my favorite things as a child of the 80s is the, the index cards. <laughs> Gives me a lot of nostalgia from elementary school. Um, and then, yeah, the maps are just like from a critical cartography perspective, like the old maps are just so awesome and fun to rip up. So thanks. Thank you. Anyana, were you talking about Salt Spring Island any chance? Actually, I, um, I, I have lived on Salt Spring, but I um, was talking about Cortez is where I used to live. Nice. Yeah. Have well, I guess I'll go. Um, I'm from Vancouver Island. I'm from Victoria. So oh, cool. yeah, yeah, I, I've seen a free store on Salt Spring. Um, so yeah, anyways, I am excited to just play with materials today. I don't really have a specific plan. Um, I am a intermedia and cyber arts student doing my BFA with a minor in sociology. And I've just been doing a lot of computer work lately. So I'm excited to just get my hands busy. And I don't, yeah, I don't really have an end result in mind. I was most surprised about, um, I think I got like, stickers you'd put on a CD. Yeah, I thought that was kind of fun. Self-adhesive. Um, I also really like the maps. I already started cutting into one. They've got these nice colors to them. And um, I am going to, I've got some paper that I can't even remember where it came from. I've got loads of this brown paper that I'm going to use as a base. And I thought maybe some charcoal might work its way in that wasn't in the care package, but I've got in the background. So yeah, cool. I could go on, but I think that's all I'm gonna say for now. Wonderful, thank you, Christine. <laughs> I can jump in um, mainly because I have to go in a few minutes. So um, hi, my name is Mark. I currently work at the Sexual Assault Resource Center. I'm the facilitator there. And I'm finishing my master's in human systems intervention in the applied human sciences. Um, and uh, I actually helped package some of, uh, I think all of the collage ones uh, I helped out. Anna and Arian and I are in a pod. So I uh, put, I, I helped them out a little bit. Um, and so I have been, creating this little collage for a few days inspired by um, I'm actually not using any of the materials that I got in the package ironically yet okay. I mean they're out and I intend to incorporate them um, but it's actually using just some old, some stuff that I had uh, Ooh, nice. so, uh, um, inspiration um, also just like seasons and thinking about life and death and rebirth and growth. Um, and uh, yeah, so this whole thing has just been a really good inspiration to start using my hands. Like Christine was talking about, I, I live and work in the abstract a lot and I'm on the computer all the time. So having something to do with my hands and uh, a different kind of abstract, I guess it's still kind of abstract, but different, uh, has been really nice. It's been really grounding and also living alone. Um, it gives an opportunity to connect to something outside. So thanks y'all. Thanks Frank, wonderful. Anyone else like to introduce themselves? I'm going to go next, or is somebody in front of me to go no, next? No, please. Well, greetings from uh, Moncton, New Brunswick, <laughs> which I didn't get a package 
I don't know. I just didn't quite catch on that they were actually mailing them out. And I really regret not getting one. However, I uh, am working on a project now, which when I was going to join today, I thought, oh, I'm not working on a collage. But uh, two weeks ago, my brother, who's uh, wintering in Louisiana, asked me to make him a costume for Courier du Mardi Gras. And Courier du Mardi Gras is a cultural uh, event in Louisiana, specifically Cajun, uh, specifically Bayou people. And they run after a chicken and then they go around wearing costumes doing this. And then they beg for nickels and rice and whatnot and, and spices and everything that they gather during the day, they'll either purchase or put in the gumbo at the end of the day. And so if anybody's familiar with the mummers, which I think are quite popular in Philadelphia and Newfoundland, but you're basically wearing a costume with all sorts of fringes and odd stuff on it. And then you go from door to door and you're asking, you know, you do a song and whatnot. And then I thought, well, this Courier du Mardi Gras uh, outfit is my collage because my brother started, started to give me ideas of what he wanted to look like. And I was like, stop, you have zero <laughs> input in what I'm going to make. And so, so I've been basically making this outfit as a collage with all these fabrics that I have. And it's, it's wild and it's shiny and it's gaudy and it's, and it's got Acadian slash Cajun references in it. And I'm really, really enjoying it. Now, the, the side note or the asterisk is that luckily he asked me to make it for him for courier uh, for 2022s. So I'm in no rush to make it. And so creative process wise is very nice because I'll work. I'm seeing Anna work and I'm basically doing the, 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 the outfit like that. Like I'll, I'll put something down and I'll be like, I don't know, maybe I'll want to do it this way. And I twist it and then I cut a few things away. And, and so it's been a, a real joy making this this costume out of 100% uh, um, found items in my house like nothing's been purchased there's going to be buttons and beads and and so basically my own personal art hive is being put put to use <laughs> in no this costume but um, and then I was at my friend's this morning a little bit illegally I'm not supposed to be at her place but we didn't spend more than six feet apart we weren't more than less than six feet apart or whatever. And then she and I get together before and we quilt, but she needed a, a, a pro, uh, help this morning. And so, so I'm gonna make a quilt of my life and I've decided that it's going to be all applique. And applique is basically collage in a certain sense with fabric. So I tend to go towards the, the, the fiber arts, if you will, but um, I, I love collage. I, I'm, I'm really enjoying Anna working because when I go back to, you know, making my stuff, it's basically exactly what she's doing, just kind of fiddling around and, you know, enjoying the process instead of worrying about the end result. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Suzanne. It's wonderful to see you. <laughs> I love, I love seeing you guys. I'm actually kind of holding back tears a bit right now, but anyways. Yeah, you want to see something? Go for it. <laughs> for those of you who did get packages, you're getting a sense, a bit of a sense of the sort of paper uh, or collage kind of materials that we get through the center. So, for instance, Christine brought up the old DVD CD labels that would go on a CD, which are now have started to become a, an obsolete uh, kind of medium um, in general as as everything goes online. Uh, but those are the kinds of things. So for instance, I was, I did a clean out. Uh, COVID is kind of a, an interesting time to do clean outs of, of spaces on, on campus. Um, a lot of departments are choosing to do some renovations during this strange time. And so I emptied a whole metal cabinet the other day of uh, unopened uh, reams of paper, uh, more, I think, DVD labels, uh, things like that. So that gives you a bit of a sense of, of the kind of work that we do behind the scenes uh, that Ariana was talking about before of 
all the the different nooks and crannies on on our campuses that we that we discover through the process of, of reuse. Um, so I'm I'm hoping you're finding interesting ways of of sort of upcycling the 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 things that that you got in your package or or to look at the things you have in your own home in a different way. Uh, we have so many things in the in the world. We have probably more abundance than we think. And so it takes sort of that moment to sort of sit and, and look at the things that we have around us and, and see the potential uh, in, in turning them into something else. I was noticing these there, I think we put in a few envelopes into some of the um, into some of the kits. But what I love about the envelope is the inside and the pattern that is inside of the envelopes, which is just so like unusual and un, unexpected or like un like you open up a bill or a something and uh, yeah and you just um, toss it away or use it maybe to write a list or something quickly, but thinking about finding the patterns is something that I love about collage. But we still have a few more people if they'd like to introduce themselves, I would love to hear from you. Would anyone like to? Oh, great, please, Lori. Hi, my name is Lori. Okay. Um, I'm a student from Coding and First Pupil Studies, and I'm a very special kind of student. I'm called a senior audit student, and I've been at Concordia for five years. And during that time, I've also become, I'm also a photographer, and I've become the photographer to Nakazet, the executive director of the Native Women's Shelter. And I do um, her various projects throughout the year. Sadly, um, well, one of her projects has also become Resilience, which is the homeless shelter at the corner of Atwater and St. Catharines. And when they opened last December, after my classes finished, I went and started cooking in the kitchen and not only cooking, but also serving the homeless. Mm -hmm. And then once COVID hit us in March and um, I, was no, I wasn't able to continue being in the kitchen because I couldn't physically distance. And we went outdoors and that's when I brought my camera out. And on a weekly basis, I would bake banana cakes and drop them off and cross the street. And um, the homeless were very comfortable with me because they were used to seeing me serve them. And um, anyhow, um, <laughs> but, I'm on a, but I'm on a path of knowledge Excellent. and in my focus and I've been become an advocate for the Indigenous population of Montreal and I'm here today doing collage with a friend and I'll let her tell you all about herself. <laughs> she knows a lot about collages. <laughs> Hello, I'm Ruth Shine and um, a, what can I say, uh, very interested in archaeology, anthropology. I, grew, I was born in Lima, Peru. And for several years, I have been going to Mexico, leading art craft groups. And in the last five years, I've been volunteering in the campo, doing exactly what we're doing now, recycling, doing collaging, and doing cards and little booklets. And it's been a superb path working uh, with the kids, uh, especially outside San Miguel. And then I've also worked with the children in Oaxaca. This is our first year not being able to go. So thanks to Lori, I am really enjoying the winter, which is not that easy. I'm 83 years old. Uh, for many years, I was involved in, uh, I had a bead store and did many programs with different people uh, beading. So lately I have been doing journaling and I'm part of a group of people. We recycle and we make what we, they call it junk journaling. And I have made several little journals using envelopes, old envelopes that you glue together 
So when I was told that you were doing this, I was thrilled. And I uh, hope to see you again. Hasta pronto. Gracias. Thank you. That was wonderful. Okay. I ask, how can we find out more about junk journaling and, and get involved? Um, you will get mesmerized. I cannot believe it. But I started two years ago, and uh, there is a wonderful woman that I follow. Her name is Barbara, and it's called 4049 dragonflies and you go on YouTube and you go to junk journaling and we are now a big community uh, for people in, in Austria and Australia, in Spain, uh, Canada and uh, the nomenclature is odd because originally it was strictly recycling. Now they do a lot of copying but still, so go to 49 Dragonflies YouTube and anything else, write me. My email is on my uh, view there. Great. I think Arian found a little bit of information too, so he's going to drop some things in the chat if you're interested there. Yeah. I'm just going to ask. Um, if we could just maybe pause the music just until we get through introductions and then we can put the music on and then, um, and then work for a little bit. Does that sound okay? Sorry about that, actually... Anna. We, we weren't sure. Sorry no, about no, that. No, no, no problem. <laughs> I just, it's a little bit hard to, to, to battle it when everybody's at a different sound level, but we're, we're working through our intros in a lovely way. It's so nice to hear where everybody's at and what they're working on. Um, Sheena, I saw you were ready if you'd like to. Yes, I'm just trying to, can you hear me okay? Yeah, great. Okay, cool. Yeah, I was just trying to convince my collage friend from uh, Niagara region to come and join us because I was like, she would just love this so much. She's like the collage superstar. Yeah. So hopefully she'll pop by. Um, but yeah, my name's Sheena and um, I don't remember what package I signed up for but it is maybe not the collage one because there's no maps as people keep mentioning but it has a lot of like uh, good random items of building kinds of nature but some paper things as well um so yeah it kind of has like a technological theme so I was looking at it putting together different ways and not really finding anything that kind of was working with my aesthetic um, but then I got this really great project in the mail, which is a miniature greenhouse project. And so like here is the, I'm working on the greenhouse frame this afternoon. <laughs> so I've been making tiny plants and tiny watering cans and tiny shovels and everything like that. And it really occurred to me that it is one of the greatest kind of reused projects because it's just little scraps like buttons and spare stray beads that like you don't know what to do with and pieces of wire. And a lot of the like things in here, like I just had a bunch of wire in here that I was just uh, deconstructing. And so this is exactly the kind of thing that you would use for the um, stem of one of the plants. And then you could just use paper scraps from like, you know, um, wrapping paper or you know any real project at all and, it's, and you, that create really interesting textures and bright colors and so yeah I just wanted to mention that I think that making tiny little dioramas in different ways you know you yeah. do it so many different aspects but could be a really great reuse project for these collage packages because yeah. even the um, paper uh, materials um, you could use to make like the background, you know, for your diorama and like create a very like kind of cute textural thing. And there's all sorts of landscapes that you could create by like ripping the paper and, um, you know, sunset scenes, whatever. And then you could use uh, some of these other like little components that you come across or that, you know, you're it's in your house and you're like, oh, I don't want to throw this out. You know, it's just going to be like another little drop in the landfill. But uh, it kind of gives you a reason to like, within reason, of course, collect many a thing in like maybe a little just box that you keep. 
then every once in a while, yeah, you can put it together, you can make some little plants in front of the collage background. And, you know, that could either be just a fun project for yourself or a great little gift where you're like, look, I recreated the scene where we were camping that one time. There's that rock that we found, like, glued right in there. People are like, oh, my heart, though. So, um, so yeah, I just wanted to share that project idea. To I love that. that. That's so great. I think you got build and tinker. Mm -hmm. That okay. was parts. Um, seem familiar from that kit with the wire and everything. So that, I mean, absolutely, there are so many things to do, like mix, but that's such a cute idea to build a 3D something yeah. and and mix, oh my goodness. Some of the materials of my thing here. Yeah. Review the build for those of you who, you know, wondered what you missed out on by choosing <laughs> <laughs> Um but yeah, so I'm glad to be here. I like virtual crafting sessions. They definitely uh, add both company and motivation to it. So I thank you for your years of work and facilitating these multiple sessions. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Sheena. Thanks, Sheena. You bring up another thing is like you're using the, the acetate. So those old sheets that you might have used for an overhead projector. Um, people might remember that from elementary school or high school. Um, it's not really a, a thing that's used anymore. Everything's gone digital in, in schools for the most part. So uh, as those things become obsolete, then it's those boxes and boxes and boxes of acetate that we try to recuperate and use in a great way, like you've done, Sheena, to create these mini, uh, these mini greenhouses. It's really awesome. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. I love it. Wonderful. We have some um, new people joining us, which is so wonderful. We're just sort of doing some introductions and talking a little bit about what surprised us about the packages that we got or some materials that we're feeling connected to or interested in um, and showing a little bit about what we're making if you feel so inclined. Does anybody else wanna um, share? I'm sorry, Anna, I just had to run out of the room for a second. Could you repeat the, the question? No problem. I was just seeing if anybody else would like to share or introduce themselves. We're still taking our time with that. We're going to kind of, yeah, flow through um, a little more introductions, but also just the time to be making. I see lots of of hands working and I love that and really I mean we've carved out 90 minutes out of our days just to kind of be together and make so um, if you'd like to yeah, share or talk about what you're doing that's really wonderful um, I have my hands going over here it's a little a little mess over in this uh, collage cam but I have a question in terms of um, what made you, like how were you able to uh, design the different packages? Like what was the thought process? I was, that's a good question. I, it was really um, intuitive and spontaneous in the sense that we have so much material, so much abundance um, in the depot right now and always, but there's just such a variety of materials that it really was about pulling things off the shelves and kind of um, thinking about how things work together and how they contrast each other. So we did some, um, we did look at like what we had a lot of. Um, the maps were an amazing addition. Um, we got them from the geography department as they cleared out a giant cabinet of class sets. So um, yeah, many of you got um, all kind of, I don't know exactly which one you got, but many of them were the same. There was like probably, you know, a class set of 50 of the same map that we cut into different parts. Um, and then really it was kind of look, like, there's Ariane with the big stack of these Lake Ontario Grimsby maps, um, but so specific and random of places but the colors and the patterns and the textures are just so kind of beautiful and inspiring. It's it's hard. One of the big things about process. Ooh, wow! Look at that. 
Oh, wow. I love that map use. Great. Thanks. I was just looking at Ariana. Yeah, um, I have to get going, but thanks so much. Thank you. Hopefully we'll see you again. Um, one of the things about it is it's sometimes things are very precious when they come in their form and like having a whole map um, maybe would mean that you wouldn't want to cut it up because it's a little bit special or having um, book pages. If you had the whole book, maybe you wouldn't want to cut it up. So breaking things into parts and kind of trying to chop up um, things into more rough textures and patterns was a big part of the package kind of uh, choreography. No, what's it called? Curation. Curation. <laughs> choreography. That too. We danced around. Well, we definitely had fun uh, putting them together. It's sort of trying to find what bits and pieces fit together, um, but also trying to figure out how to put them in an envelope that was uh, that could travel fairly well across the country. Uh, we did limit it to, to Canada. Uh, it was, well, with everything going on, it was a bit hard to think about going North America, but, um, and yeah, how could you, like for Build and Tinker, for the one that Sheena got, how do you put things in that you could, that you could build and tinker with, but in an envelope that's only like 20 centimeters, max 20 centimeters thick, so. It was it was a challenge, but a, a challenge that we were up for and, and had fun with, and and we're glad to see that you're you're enjoying uh, what you've received uh, if you receive the package. And we're we're hoping we can do this in the future again. Hopefully, uh, we'll be out of COVID by the by the fall. Time will tell. Um, but uh, we'll probably do this project again in in a different way, uh, and continue to collaborate with the fourth space and have have some uh, some artist residencies in, in their space as well and uh, have a chance for for people in the Montreal community to sort of come together and, and make art together and, and maybe go across the country again and, and have us making together. Yeah, like even having uh, pop-ups like throughout the city or something where people are outside or anyways, yeah, just there's so much to think about, yeah. Yeah, lots of Definitely. The packages were so fun to put together, actually, because it was really act surprising how things kind of um, also they kind of coordinated in a really interesting way. I don't know um, if you felt it when you unpacked your package, but there sort of was like color themes that emerged as we were like laying things on top of each other. And we're, you know, we packed uh, about 60 packages at a time. So we laid everything out and, and would kind of walk around and put one thing on top of the next thing. Um, so it, it was very organic, but also this, you know, kind of magical um layering that happened in just the kind of the packing of it yeah are there any other like yeah questions or thoughts please feel free i actually have a question although i probably should have asked this before doing what i did um i was trying to stick cardboard on top of the fabric and it just kept going Whoop! uh so then i tried to put the glue on top of it too and that didn't work and so i just ended up stapling it because whatever but was there like a better way to have done that to make like cardboard stick on top of materials like fabric an idiot i just have like you know like a regular kind of glue and this didn't do the trick any thoughts? Okay. You could make like a slurry just with um, with like just regular school school glue and and water it down and just dip your fabric in that. Mm. It would be it would be not one hundred percent watery, but it would be fairly watery. I don't know. I'd say 50-50 glue and water, and then and then just kind of wash or dip your fabric into that, and it would be thin enough you could kind of wring out the excess and then just start working with that that's a good idea maybe food for thought for next time <laughs> well it's the beauty of collage right it's all it's all in the process of trial and error and sometimes you have these happy accidents that happen and or just ways you won't do it the next time <laughs> mm. 
Thank you. So we were talking a little bit about like, what if people didn't have um, glue at home? And, you know, I've been using this glue stick because that's what I, you know, that's what I like. And I happen to have it already. We really wanted to encourage that it wasn't like, oh, you got to go out to the store. That would defeat the whole point of this project. Um, so we were talking a little bit about um, a wheat paste. Um, wheat paste is an interesting one that sometimes it works better with paper projects. Um, paper products. So it's just uh, like a tablespoon of flour and a little bit of water to get it to be a consistency. And you can actually, that's a very small scale. You could do a cooked version that you, you put it over the stove and you cook and um, kind of uh, thicken up the water and the, and the um, flour to become kind of like a wheat paste. And that's a biodegradable um, thing with um, your kitchen um, yeah, and it's compostable. That's a good one. Um, but Mod Podge, you were talking about that, Roberto. Um, that's a good thing to use. I have a little container of something like that. Acrylic gel medium. What do you like to use? Do you want to talk about what you use, Roberto? Yeah, well, you can use it as a sealer. You can put it in the fabric and then the paint it in the back and then glue it and then put a layer on top Yeah. to seal it. And then the fabric will not shrink because I think that that's the problem that she's having. Because it's wet. Yeah. Mm. Because okay. the glue will shrink it, but the Mod pod will probably make them to stay. You have to, to sort of like put the glue to glue it to the carton or the cardboard and then put a layer of Mod Podge and you can water it down and then let it dry. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. Yeah. Good idea. I, mean, I do a lot of painting, so I, I have like a, a, a matte Liquitex. Um, Is that yours behind you? Yes. Oh, that's lovely. I love yeah. it. It's so colorful. Yeah, <laughs> I like color. Yeah, so I never done that. My collages were in high school, so uh, I was curious to retake it. So I'm here just observing and, and absorbing all the ideas. <laughs> Wonder. But I wanted to, to incorporate, uh, you know, abstract into painting into, into my collage too, so. Yeah, what I love about collage and painting is um, a lot of layers, you know, you yes. start and you build exactly. things up and the work behind you really, I mean, you, you can see those layers and how the textures play together. And yeah. um, I think that that's very similar, actually. Yeah, very. Love it. Yeah. Hi everyone. Hello. <laughs> I don't Hi. know if you understand me. I, <laughs> I just uh, to present me because I'm new. Uh, my name is Josiane. I'm an artist uh, painting and I'm member at uh, l'imprimerie uh, center. Uh, so I do also engraving and sorry my, my English is not good <laughs> because it's not my first language but uh, I just want to say hello to everybody and I enjoy the moment uh, with you <laughs> thank you thank you so much thank you merci it's wonderful hello my name is Willem oh hello Hi, what's your name Willem Mom, have you been making some art? Yes. Would you like to show us? Okay. It's a hotel that is all made of chocolate. Oh, oh yum. <laughs> Excellent. Else? What, what in the package did you really like? What was your favorite object in the package? This scrap paper. Mm -hmm. you like a little dude? Just a little dude. Yeah. And while we were talking, you also made me this. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. What nice jewelry. 
Um, and the matching bracelet, excuse me. <laughs> and we just want to say hi. Wonderful, thank you so much. I really love seeing the work that you made. I hope that you'll take a picture of it and submit it into our show. Okay. Great. That's another thing we haven't really talked about was the hope that people make over the next couple months. And um, well, like whether you received your package in December, but several weeks. And then in March, um, the 22nd of March is a uh, sucker's birthday. And we usually do an artist residency where we have, um, we have people in the space working on um, art from like these kinds of materials, but since they couldn't be here, we thought we would just expand it out and do a digital, um, a digital art show. So um, we'll have, um, oh, look, Aryan said, if you'd like to share a picture um, of the work that you make, uh, we'll, you can email us and we'll be putting together kind of like, um, I don't know exactly what it's gonna look like yet, but a digital show where you can see and scroll through all of the work that's made from all across the, yeah, across the way. How do we share the chat? Um, yeah. Oh, save. Um, 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 that we can, we'll have the chat saved, Lisa. Um, after the event closes, so then we can send it to you or whoever needs it. Perfect. Okay. I see some other hands that are, are making. Does anybody else want to share what they're working on? Or some I wanted working? to share about a little of uh, a thing I experimented with recently when we were talking about um, different mediums to to stick things together. Mm -hmm. um, and I personally really like just mixing, yeah, water and wood glue and acrylic gel. Nice. Sometimes some flour, so it depends kind of my mood, I guess, or what's around. Um, but recently I experimented with adding actually acrylic paint into the mix to see if I could like paint it, like tint it at all. And I can show you how it turned out. I actually have the piece just over here. Um, so I just added a bit of like red and yellow to make this orange. And um, this is just a cone structure that was made out of a, I forget what the material is called, but it's just like a really solid uh, paper, I guess they use in architecture. And then the rest of it is like words written out onto lined paper with the, uh, with the thing applied on top. And it was it was kind of neat because I it was um, you know it was transparent enough that you could still see the text coming through. Uh, but it still like gave the white paper a bit of a color. And it looks pretty firm. Like oh yeah it's pretty solid. Cool. Yeah. But I think also because of that base being that uh, yeah, I don't know what that paper is called, but you know, it could be even like half a millimeter to a millimeter thick. Yeah, if you're if you're allergic actually to wheat, uh, you could use rice flour uh, to make a, a rice paste. Uh, it works just about as well. Um, and even uh, you could use uh, flax seeds uh, to create a sort of a gel medium. Uh, that can work much the same oh, yeah. way that Christine used it on her like uh, gel. phone. Yeah, a little more unpredictable, but definitely worth kind of trying things out, especially if you don't have a traditional glue. There's no need to go out and buy that. I'm also curious, like the effects of doing this on the parasympathetic uh, system. Like I'm sure it's really, really great for us. We spend so much time looking at screens. So it's really nice to like the visceral part, but it's, yeah, you can, I find you can retain a lot more information sometimes when you're not, your eyes are closed, but you're just doing something else. It's, it's much more uh, embodied in a way as a practice. Yeah, I agree. Sometimes you need to carve out that time to be able to um, to find the time. Oops, did that all die? <laughs> it's just that low battery over there on the collect. 
collage cam. Um, just overstimulation and finding the time to do that. This is a little bit funny because we're here together on Zoom. So we're kind of mixed, um, but I hope everybody's able to, you know, focus on their work too. And maybe it sparks a little more um, in, uh, creative inspiration that allows you to continue making even after the screen kind of turns off. Hi, Caroline. Hi, how's it going? Wonderful. It's so nice to see you here. Yeah, I'm so excited to do some collaging. Excellent. We were just talking a little bit about what was the thing that you got inside your package that surprised you or that you were most intrigued by? I don't know if you'd like to share. Yeah, I can definitely share. I think one thing I got was a little piece of purple paper um, and it was really small and I think I was just, it had a little hole on top of it. Um, I was wondering what the hole was for and I ended up making a little bookmark out of it because I also got some beads in the package. So I just strung the beads onto the hole. I think that was interesting because I, I was curious what it was for. Um, and I also got a cool piece of a map, which I'm very excited to, to use. I love maps and collages. Great. Yeah. I think what you're talking about was a, a paint chip. Maybe. I can get it, actually. I still have it here. Yeah, because we have, like, all of these paint chips. Like this little one? Yeah. It, it looks like one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It says Benjamin Moore on it. Yeah. yeah, the the paint chips were a really fun random addition. We got oh well, it that way. Uh, <laughs> these these um the colors that was one of the synchronicity of packing them that Lisa was asking about as we were kind of putting things down and packing the kits. Yeah, the the colors that we did were totally random. They just came from the big stack in our hands, but the way that they played with like the map and you know in other like um. It just worked out really surprisingly well. That's great. What did you see? What you made with it? Yeah, I. This is the little bookmark that I made. Nice. Because I got these three beads, and you're right. The colors worked perfectly because I got two purple beads and a blue bead, and it's kind of like a lavender paint chip. So it couldn't <laughs> have worked better. Oh, it's a bookmark. <laughs> yeah, a bookmark. That's wonderful. I love the paint chips. I think they're such a bright, vibrant uh, surface. Like I love working in collage, but I get kind of stressed out with too big of a canvas, like too big of a starting place. So you can see, I like working on these like little cards, um, but the paint chips are also a really great starting place and to do kind of multiples um, and then take and pull kind of different textures through the, the on multiple surfaces feels like an easy and kind of relaxing way of working instead of like, thinking that I have to cover or create a whole composition in one large space. You mean the little paint uh, coloring that you would get like from a store? Yeah. You know what you could do with those too? Like, you know how she did her, uh, the book sign? Yeah. I did that with um, the ones that have multiple colors. Mm. Nice. You know, you can just get them at the store. You end up home after you looked at paint and they're like long with multiple colors. Yeah off the edge and then you can write like a quote or something and then you can paint uh not paint like uh gloss it over with blue or something to give it that gloss and then it becomes like a you could just yeah it great it. idea and those colors that are usually sequenced in a paint chip are they have a lot in common you know usually they're like different values so they're light to dark um and they kind of work work well together that's a really interesting reuse thing. I think a uh, paint store actually donated um, all of these ones to La Rouge da, the Art Hive in St. Henry is where we got these ones. Um, Cause if we don't have a paint store at Concordia campus, um, but they seem like a good addition to our, uh, our shelves. Great way to learn about color theory. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. I got one card of the Loyola campus. I don't know if you're 
And then for me, uh, it was a little thick because I'm thinking about layers and layers in, in my experience as a painter. But then what I did is that they're layers that you can peel. If you take one corner, you can just peel and then you will have a thinner. So that's a tip for people that want to, uh, to get it thinner and it, it's easier to, to glue because mm -hmm. it's, uh, the paper is, is thinner than it was. And then you can reuse the, the, the other little piece of paper too, because it's like interesting shapes and stuff like that, so. Yeah, the thicker things to kind of cut yeah. them or tear them into thinner um, single layers. Ooh, what do you got there? This is like glue? You wanna show what you have down there? Oh. You know that? Oh, it's a coffee cup holder. I just made it right now. Interesting. What is it made out of? Glue, hot glue. Oh, so layers of the glue all stuck together. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Can you see through it? Kind of. Oh, yeah. It makes a weird word. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> it almost looks like lace. Yes. Yeah, it's really pretty. It was good to. It play. really catches the light. It plays around with it. <laughs> it's good to play around. Now I have no glue sticks left, though. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the give and take. <laughs> Did you use a glitter one? Yeah. There's oh, there's a bit of glitter stick too. Yeah. Did you guys receive um, a package from us? I do. Yeah, I'm kind of using some of the stuff I've got, the oh. foot that I cut up, and I'm using the, uh, it's like a sample for textiles, and it was really hard, so I decided that it would be my base, and I'll just build on it. So. Nice. Yeah, those all came from the planning department. They have to decide what covers all of the chairs here at Concordia, and they get all of these samples. That's neat. Yeah, I'm glad you're finding it's something kind of, to do with them. Yeah, it's funny where you can get materials from, hey? You wouldn't think that that would be. Yeah, that's been one of the biggest kind of joys and curiosities of this project is really just like learning what um, waste, waste product or like what things all of the different departments throw out and they, things that they no longer need and they need to get rid of. So, um, and they are very surprised and happy usually to learn that somebody else might wanna do something with them. So it's really, um, you just gotta ask. It's a show off, it's a show off theater. No, it's not a show and tell. <laughs> I remember getting some of those fabric, fabric swatches from Sucker way back and I made, I just strung them together to make Kind of a like a prayer flag i guess mm -hmm. my version of it and uh i still have it i love it i will look at it all the time and and i mentioned before that i like to work with with fabric and i was just thinking you know i, I wish that there would be some fabric stores that would give more fabric to you know um projects like yours because i think sometimes quilters are very creative but they get stuck on the pattern and they're not always thinking in terms of creating and just mixing and matching and just collaging instead of sewing straight lines and having it follow a pattern and looking for perfection. And, and, and I, I, you know, sometimes they'll like, oh, I didn't like it. So I undid it. And I'm just like, no. And so it, it's, it's, it's very nice to also collage with fabrics. Mm -hmm. So I, I love the fact that they donated fabrics to you guys. Yeah. Yeah, that's, um, that's really the uh, trick, though, is a lot of places don't think that anybody wants that scrap. And if you're willing to go and pick that up, um, connecting with your local fabric store or your local paper store or print store, um, there's often a 
huge abundance of offcuts and um, bits and pieces uh, that they're super happy to give away because they pay um, for the landfill. They pay to have it disposed of. So um, kind of seeing uh, that the things that different um, stores use and different departments use uh, it is a great way to kind of uh, identify what materials you potentially could siphon out and use for a different project. I'm really encouraged to hear that because I approached um, one of the fabric stores in our neighborhood for, for like samples and that. And they're like, oh, we have to return it to the company. Um, and so they're like, we have nothing to offer you. So I will be more diligent the next time I go out looking because it's nice to hear that there are opportunities to get stuff like that. Absolutely. The other thing is to, to talk to the company, I mean, and see if they'll um, like change the way that their process is. Cause sometimes it has to be returned um, in order for them to receive a re refund or whatever. This business is a business that's interested in making money, but um, there can be a corporate shift if enough people kind of say like this, what happens to it after, why not? Um, let's just use it in sight instead of shipping it back across the world. Ariane, did you have mm -hmm. It's actually a rarity that, that a company will take back their product. Mm -hmm. um, more often than not, uh, once, once a product leaves the company, it's up to whoever's receiving it to deal with it. And so we're, we're seeing a lot more corporate responsibility happening uh, as, as companies become more aware of the impacts of having, especially on a waste level. Um, and now just recently, the UN uh, changed uh, one of their laws that uh, for plastic waste, um, that a country, a receiving country has to give consent to receive another country's plastic waste. And I think that's expanding to other types of waste as well. So really refreshing to see that, especially as we've seen uh, those kinds of problems in the last few years. I mean, it's been going on for a long time. Uh, but to see this growing uh, corporate responsibility from, from larger companies saying, OK, well, we have to deal with this. This is our responsibility. Um, so good to see that. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, opening those conversations with companies is important too. And well, can I, you know, as a consumer, help you uh, to divert some of this. There's, there's a few different models of, of creative reuse centers that um, work more on like a city scale. I, um, one of the constraints about Concordia and Sucker here is that we only take materials from inside the university. So that doesn't, um, that means it comes from like different departments and projects on campus, but we don't accept donations from individuals or from, um, from companies like that. Um, we, we just, it's like, like limitations in terms of space and um, and like um, yeah health and safety things, but uh, there's a few models uh, that work on kind of more of a scale like that, and um, they're able to often write uh, kind of a receipt for the received goods that allows a company to kind of let that go instead of to an individual maybe a, a kind of a group or a company or a project like this could kind of take the onus and um, encourage that kind of pickup, which makes it easier too. I think companies are often um, like the yeah, you know, yarn store or the fabric store may not um, know what you're going to do with it and feel worried about giving that away for free unless they can kind of trace a, a path. So having the backing of a reuse center or a project sometimes may help. I used to work for a magazine store part-time like years and years ago. And the way a magazine store works is it's all on consignment. So if they send a hundred Vogue's and they only sell 70, well, the other 30, they're not charged for. Yeah. So they, it's only what they sell. So how they get their money back or how they're charged, I guess, for the 70 and not charged for the 30 is they have to rip the cover off because that's where the skew is. And the whole rest of the magazine, they throw it in the garbage. And as Anna was saying, I mean, companies are really trying to figure out ways to reduce the waste, but they don't always get the, the assistance from the community or they sometimes 
that's not where their headspace is and their when their approach to have things taken off their hands for free and prevent them from having to spend money to send the, the, the stuff to the landfill, they would love that. So keep that in mind. Magazines are sold on a consignment basis to a store mm -hmm. and what they don't sell, they rip the cover off. So all the rest of it is amazing collage material. Thank you so much for this. Actually, I have to go, but I just, uh, cause I have, I have a class this evening, so I have to go to school. Um, but I finished my card. It's a uh, beautiful, yeah. So when it's dry, I can reuse it next year to gift it at Christmas to someone else. Hopefully, they'll they'll enjoy this as much as I enjoyed it when I received the original card. Thank you so much. I hope we guys uh, decide to do more collage sessions it was fun yeah that's a great idea well it was really nice to meet you and we'll see you again for sure take, take care. care yeah has anybody else found materials in kind of unusual places they want to share i always pick up wood from the mountain when they cut the trees i've made um stools uh tables yeah <laughs> I love that. Works, yeah, with the uh, hairpin legs and stuff. So yeah. It's nice. Wow, we're we're learning something new about you today, Lisa. <laughs> yeah. I know you're an amazing photographer, <laughs> but you're a woodworker too. This is great. That's great. During the holidays, I um, may have gone through a tin of candies and collected all these wrappers. So I just found them so pretty. I started keeping them and I didn't get a package because I, I hadn't heard about it before, but I wanted to join today and I, it was the perfect excuse to use these candy wrappers. So I had a lot of candy, <laughs> but so I, I just stuck them on this and it looks really pretty. It looks like stained glass almost. Yeah. That's amazing. You don't really think about it when you're just eating one, but then by having an abundance of them, you start to, you start to kind of think about what you can do with that. I was, I have a candy wrapper in here too. <laughs> There's some chocolates that we've been devouring and just cutting off the, oh, look, Mark has some candy wrapper. They're the reason chocolates and you can like, I don't know if anyone did this with Starburst when they were younger you like fit them together in a chain yeah. and it's just become this fun little thing. It's useless, but fun. Bottle caps that I found on the street. Bottle caps. They're all bottle caps and um, from, <laughs> from Peru, from Mexico, from here and flattened by the car. And then I made a little hole and they really look quite nice. So it's recycling. And sometimes they they really are very pretty. This one is only beer bottle cups. So anyway, you can use anything. Just walk on the street, especially, well, probably not so much here in Montreal, but in other places, it's treasure troves. <laughs> Yeah, it's about keeping your eyes open and collecting in abundance. I think that that's a really big kind of tip is, you know, one thing it maybe feels like trash, but when you have a lot of it and yeah. like in multiples and you start to problem solve what to do with that or think about how to pattern it, they're beautiful. They really, they are. Like I, almost like wind chimes. Yeah, and I put it on a chain. I have some recycled chain. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and the patterns are beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, another idea. Great. We love ideas. I have two things I'd love to share. Um, something I found uh, has been really uh, fruitful for me, both in Victoria and in Montreal, is going to bike shops and asking for their scrap bike tube. I find the, um, well, okay, well, they are very dirty, and when you cut them open, they have this weird, like, powder inside them 
So it's kind of a messy job and they have that kind of tire smell, which I actually don't mind personally. <laughs> um, but it's a very unique material. I've uh, worked with it more sculpturally. Um, I've, I've glued one, a bunch together to make a really long piece that I put compressed air through and a performance once. And I even like hand knit some of them together and I've used them I've like pleated them and and just uh, used stapler to 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 create different textures and put it on a costume. I'm not much of a seamstress, so duct tape and staples and hot glue seems to work sometimes for making costumes. And something I'm just gonna quickly pull out. Um, I look. I used, or, you know, before everything closed down, I was um, hosting events through Paint Night. I don't know if anyone's heard of Paint Night. Yeah, so basically, it, I'm like Bob Ross at a bar, pretty much. Um, and I end, it's like ridiculous, because I end up with like, so many of these canvases. I'll have like, two of the same paintings of these the same size canvas. I just like don't know what to do with them. Um, so one day I just like decided to tear all the canvas apart. And I was in this extreme fibers course. So I was learning all this like hand knitting techniques and, and like finger knitting and, and arm knitting. Mm -hmm. And I made this from like all wow. canvas pieces of canvas because I just ripped them in like just this one inch diameter string and then tied them all together to make a long piece and then used it. But I don't know, I don't know what to do with this now. Sometimes I've hung it up and just looked at it, but it's a little bit more interesting in person probably because you can start to look at, you can sort of see the gradations of colors depending on which canvas it was ripped off of because this is like a strand of like, I don't know, could have been like 20 paintings or something. So yeah, I just wanted to share that. Wonderful, that that's all. so interesting. That's like 3D yeah. collage. Yeah. <laughs> well, kind of like what Sophie shared uh, earlier with her candy wrapper. I really like how, how the candy wrappers sort of stuck out from the, the cardboard, I guess, that you, that you glued them to. Yeah. Going beyond the page, building it up and continuing. Excellent. So I'm just, just kid, oh, yeah. I'm just curious, like, do can some people share like their creative process? Like when they like do they look at one piece from the package and it inspires them to create from that? Or is there something like I don't know? It's a very general question, but I'm just wondering if anyone can sort of talk about their creative process. <laughs> I could share. Um, I, would, I, I received a, a YouTube link today that was about uh, Ojibwe philosophy to life, that life is, is a journey and that we're walking on this journey and we have a choice and we have a choice to walk forward or to walk backward and so it was kind of like I've just been looking for things that kind of like represent to me like journey and so I've got like some I've got some feet but I'm not sure if I'm walking forward or backwards so I kind of like chop and uh, I've got a, a canoe here and uh, there's part of a map that that was there and um, the rest of it's kind of like that was pretty and in my package, but. <laughs> Can I see? That's great to start with a piece oh, that like. The house. Oh, that's something to think about. Yeah. Oh, this is the roof. My my process was a little bit the same with with the with the Curiel de Mardi Gras costume, and as I mentioned before, I see it as a bit of a collage. But what was interesting as Jennifer just mentioned about the Ojibwe's, as I was researching the Curiel du Mardi Gras, 
a really, you know, there, there's a very strong, or there was a strong indigenous population in Louisiana. And so I'm, as I'm researching things to put in the costume, it's a bit of a history lesson for me. So the, this costume's for my younger brother and when he'll wear it, I want him to be clear as he explains it to people basically that this was not just randomly thrown together. And I feel as I'm watching everybody do collage, it's, it's, it's the same thing. Like I think from an outsider, it looks like things are just thrown together, but there's a thought process that's going into it and, and, and thinking of certain things, sometimes historical things or, or brings us back to a time in our life or it brings us to a, a culture we want to explore and I, I feel that way about the costume that, you know, as my brother will be wearing it in Louisiana, that I hope that he does talk to people about it and how certain things uh, came about in the costume and how, uh, I mean, it's not going to be historically accurate, but it's certainly going to have a nod to people in Louisiana that are sometimes uh, marginalized because uh, there's one part of his costume was just going to reflect uh, Treme. And Treme was in the ninth district of Louisiana that was hardest hit by uh, Hurricane Katrina. And still to this day, for various um, reasons, uh, are not getting the help that they need or that they should have gotten like other districts got and, and whatnot. So, so I feel that collage in general, whether you're using paper or um, a, um, a uh, textile medium, that you're you are telling a story and to maybe somebody else it looked like, like I don't know what the French the English word is but in French uh, at least in Acadie here we'll say c'est du babouillage it's it looks like it's just random but it, on a on on a one level it is random but on another level when we try to explain it like like in the instance that Jennifer explained there is there's a process there's there's a thought there's intention going into this that there's there's, it's a question mark that you want people to ask you. How did you come up? How did you come to make this? And it's a, a conversation starter, I guess. So, mm -hmm. I'm wondering how do you have that conversation in this kind of digital world? So if people photograph their work and send them to us, it, maybe there's an invitation to write a little like information piece about the process or about the history that went into it or about some of that. I love hearing that piece and you're so right in saying that that conversation is such, um, it gives so much more insight to the work that's created. So I'm, I really encourage, hopefully um, all of you will, will think about that piece as well and submit um, a final piece to go into our show um, for March and then add maybe a little bit of a artist statement or a, a, a kind of inquiry question that you are working with um, that we could have alongside that. I think that would add a wonderful depth to the show that we're working on. Um, just to be mindful of time, it's gone so fast. It's almost five o'clock. So um, I can't even believe it. Um, just like some little housekeeping things is um, we're gonna be doing um, four more sessions, um, one every week. The next one is draw, which is on Monday from one to 2.30. And you're all welcome to join us there. Um, that maybe some of the people will have received draw kits, which were primarily um, paper product. So a lot of things that were in the collage, but um, mixed. And there'll also be um, some people that join us that didn't receive those kits like we have here. And that's totally welcome. Um, people drawing and mark making with all sorts of different paints and um, uh, mark making things like uh, ink and um, uh, like um, what's it called the the pastels those kinds of things so um, that's on Monday the following Monday February 8th is so um, so that will be thinking about uh, fibers primarily uh, we sent a package of a bunch of random um, sewing things that will be the same time 1 to 2 30 on Monday um, 
the Build and Tinker, Sheena, if you want to join for that. Um, that one's on February 18th and it's Thursday, 1 to 2.30 as well. So that's a bunch of unusual um, kind of bits and bobs that Sheena was talking about that they got. Um, and then we'll have the final one, which is the mystery package, but you're all welcome to join for any of them. That was a combination package that had like uh, random everything, a little bit of everything in it. So it will be really lovely if you um, would like to join us in those and continue to share your work as it kind of comes. Um, but this has been really, yeah, so wonderful to have you all here. And um, does anybody have any kind of closing things that they would like to share? We have a few more minutes. I yeah. just have a question. Sure. If, um, maybe I just missed this. Where am I sending the photo of my work? Sure. Yes. Good question. It's reuse at concordia.ca. That's our separate okay. email. So the email. Also, okay. Yeah. Email is the best. We um, it will be able. Then we'll be able to compile that with um, maybe a written statement as well. And you can submit as many photos as you'd like. Um, but then we'll compile all of that and be publishing um, a kind of online art show for March twenty second. And if we'll you can also have um, a Facebook group that's so so active right now um we're hoping that we'll can well my fault but we'll hopefully be able to put, put um some more photos of work in progress and that is um it's called sucker um creative care making i think arian's dumping that into the chat um and so if you wanted to show your in progress work there or connect with the other 600 members, it's not, it's not nearly that many that have joined so far, but maybe um, if you use Facebook, you're, that's a kind of active way you could continue to stay in touch. Um, and I also wanted to mention, oops, sorry. Um, I also wanted to mention um, if you're in Montreal area and you are trying to get access to materials there, since our closure, there's been an interesting Facebook group that um, that uh, has popped up. It's called Crow. It's creative reuse and zero waste. And it's a trading kind of sharing group within the city where people post things that they are either looking for in search of or that they have an abundance of and they'd like to share. So if you're looking for materials, um, all with kind of the idea and hope to keep things out of the landfill. And it's a lot of things that like you might see on our shelves here. Um, I um, help uh, moderate that and uh, kind of keep an eye on what's happening over there. But that's a good resource um, since we can't have you come and collect materials here right now. Any other yeah, questions, Lisa? I just was going to say when you're photographing your work, if you can try to either photograph it next to a window so there's some nice natural light. And if not, even like your back balcony or something, you can just put it out on the on the base and just to have as much like natural even light as possible. Yeah, that's so, a great so tip. Daytime. <laughs> it's a really good tip. Um, and also, um, if you wanted to post in progress work or a picture of you um, where you are, like um, I'm also curious to include maybe when you submit work, what city you are working in. Um, if you feel like you'd like to share across that. I didn't ask. Um, I know that Suzanne is in Moncton, but um, I think that there has been some people that have joined us um, from all over and um, it would be nice to represent that uh, as well. Yeah. Oh, Marie. Cool. Yeah. Just another little question. I thought I heard earlier. Um, is are we going to receive like a list from the chat or like an? I guess what I'm saying is there's a bunch of links in there that I'd like to check out. That like my hands were kind of busy here. So are we going to be able to access the chat after this meeting is closed? Um, Fourth Space is going to compile all of that for us. And we'll be able to put some of that either on the Facebook event um, or on their website page, like some of the key resources. Yeah, yeah awesome. we can we can Thank send you. around uh, we can send around an email to all the participants uh, awesome. here today with the chat from today, so that you have that. 
Thank you. Um, and Aryan, I, I saw you, you had something to add as well. No, you're good. Okay, you're just, now you're just waving at me. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I just I just wanted to take a minute, if I could, just to uh, just really express sincere gratitude to all of you for uh, coming together during this time and joining us in in what really felt very uh, like what we hope all of our <laughs> events feel like. And it's very actually hard to get people just to kind of be in the space and communicate and share and do it so freely. So we're really appreciative that you were open to this format and this way of kind of coming together and tilting your cameras down when we can see hands and seeing your faces. All of it has been just uh, really great. And as we've seen in the chat, people are also grateful for that kind of community feeling when we live in sort of this weird isolation moment. I will say, because you mentioned Facebook a few times there, Anna, that we were, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, live streaming this session on Facebook, but only the, the collage camera. And what we did notice is that we had a, a, an audience glued the entire time to your hands, Anna. So oh, wow. usually, usually we see people coming and going, but they stayed for the, <laughs> for, the full, for the full time. So I guess really it's very meditative as well, just to watch somebody doing something, you know, working that way and, and hearing voices and so on. So thank you for that. And uh, yeah, we, we invite you back for the next session as, as has already been explained. Uh, if you have any questions, you're also welcome to just uh, write info dot four, like contact us at four space, and we'd be happy to put you in touch or, or answer your questions. So I think on, on that note, we're, and, and I apologize again for busting in with some music earlier. We oh. were kind of giving you a bit of a soundtrack, but I realize it's, uh, you know. And we thought it might work, but it seems like maybe, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> we're learning. We're learning. Um, any hoodle. Um, I'll say good night to everyone and uh, have a great evening. It's great to see so many familiar faces here today. Uh, I'm giving shout outs to Lori and Sophie <laughs> and Mark and so on. But uh, uh, we, we look forward to seeing you hopefully next time. And, uh, and yeah, and if not, share with your friends. You, you, you probably have folks who are interested in joining us next time as well. So yeah. thank you. A big thank you to Anna and Aryan. Thank you so much, guys. Great. Work. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Okay.